He yields back. Our time has expired. Thank you so very much. My uh, pleasure to yield now five minutes uh, to uh, Congressman Stubbe. You're recognized. Thank you, Madam, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Director, thanks for, thanks for being here. Obviously, the committee has a lot of questions, and we appreciate your attendance today. On July 1st of last year, I wrote a letter to both you and the director of the DC Departments of Corrections about the treatment of the January 6th suspects. Your office responded on July 21st. The DC Department of Corrections has so far refused to answer and we're almost a year after the, the fact that I sent the letter. Uh, director, I recognize that many of the most egregious examples of mistreatment of January 6th inmates happen not in your system, but in the DC jail. Uh, it has been reported that January 6th inmates in the DC jail who are not vaccinated for COVID-19 are forced into solitary confinement for 14 days after meeting with their attorneys. Yes or no, does BOP have the same policy in your facilities? No, Congressman, we do not. Well, I'm glad to hear that. And that all also highlights how out of step and illegal the policies of the DC jail regarding January 6th inmates is. It's also been reported that January 6th inmates in the DC jail have not been allowed haircuts or to attend religious services unless they are vaccinated for COVID-19. Yes or no, does BOP have the same policy? No, Congressman, we treat all every people in our custody. Uh, everybody has equal access and is treated with uh, dignity and has access to everything equally. Regardless this further shows, everything. thank you for your, your response. This further shows how egregious the DC jail's mistreatment of January 6 inmates is. It has further been reported that January 6 inmates in the DC jail have been denied medical treatment. And this was largely the basis for a federal judge finding the warden in contempt. In your experience as a career law enforcement officer and a prison official, is this acceptable conduct by a correctional institution to deny medical treatment? Congressman, I'm not gonna uh, uh, comment on, on what another correctional agency does without knowing all the information. I can just stress to you that in the BOP, which is who I represent, everyone has equal access to medical care programs, in, in community placement, things of that nature. I would so in B DC corrections. So, well, I did, and they're not answering my questions. So I'm just highlighting the differences in the, how you run your agency and how they're running theirs. Um, additionally, I would like to ask for an update on the statistics provided to me in your office's response to that July 1st letter. If you know the answers offhand, that would be great, but I understand if you don't have that in front of you or you don't know, uh, but I would like your commitment today to follow up with my office on the following. First, the number of January 6 inmates in your in BOP's custody that are awaiting trial and the number of such inmates who are in special housing units. Second, the number of January 6 inmates serving sentences and the number of such inmates who are in special housing units. I would ask your commitment today to get me those responses. Yes, Congressman, I can get you those responses. We do, I'm aware of, we, uh, we have 19 in our custody. Eight of those are pretrial. As to their specific housing today, I don't want to misspeak, but I will certainly follow up with that information uh, with your staff. Okay, I would appreciate that. You said 19 in custody and how many in pretrial confinement? 19 in custody, eight of those are pretrial. Uh, I don't know their exact status today. I don't want to misspeak. If you could provide the details of that, not just to me, but I'm sure the members of this committee um, would also be interested in that information. I've got a little bit of time left, so uh, one more question. In your office response to my letter, it was noted that judges, quote, routine, routinely make recommendations to the Bureau regarding placement of an inmate at a specific institution or enrollment in programs. And you're also, your office also noted that the Bureau's policy requires, and I quote, a good faith effort to follow these judicial recommendations. I would point out that such judicial recommendations are often very much at the discretion of the judge. And while I generally have faith in our judiciary to fairly call balls and strikes on purely legal matters, on discretionary issues such as this, it is obvious, obviously possible for personal biases to come into play. So my question is this, if a judge makes a recommendation on the terms of a January 6 inmate's custody and that recommendation was influenced by the judge's political leanings, BOP would be compelled by policy to make a good faith effort to follow that recommendation. Is that correct? 
Congressman, uh, recommendations that are made by the judiciary, we certainly respect them and work with them, uh, but there's a lot of moving parts inside our agency. We make the final determination. It is simply that, a recommendation. We give it the, the uh, look, but ultimately we make those decisions based on the best uh, place to quarter and keep people safe and secure. Thank you, Madam Chair. My time's expired.